Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with Toxic Encounters books. So I'm looking at um, multiple chapters and certain concepts that I want to add a discussion to. And so the title of the book is, of course, Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships, uh, part one, and it's part one of a three-part series. So let's look at mate value, which is housed in chapter three of the book. And there are three questions that I want to consider as we go through this discussion. So what is your mate value? Do you consider yourself as having high or low mate value? And what are some of the ways in which you can increase your mate value? Mate value is a relative term. It's a contrasting term. It's a socially perceived term, even though it should be uh, based upon individual perception. So you have definitely different social rungs of the ladder, right? You have people who are old money. You have people who are, are new money. You have celebrity money. You have royal money. You have different levels and different contexts of money. And so whether that person is um, who fits on one of those upper echelon levels uh, whether that person fits the beauty factor of mate value really doesn't matter because class matters in those types of situations. And it doesn't necessarily mean that people are more classy than you. It, it just means that it's, it's about class. It's about money. It's about economics. So then your mate value, there's a way that you may view yourself that's your individual perception, self-perception. And then there's a way that you are viewed by society in terms of social perception. And again, it does depend on what kind of money you have. People often say that if you are beautiful, that could be your currency. And you can use that to level up, right? But then if you are not, if you do not fit the beauty factor, then you are expected to stay at average status, even if you do your uh, job to to sort of pull yourself up by your bootstraps and actually become a millionaire. Somehow, based upon our social perception of your beauty, you would never be able to fit uh, within our understanding um, um, higher value, right? So then mate value, again, uh, people base their mate value on uh, on different things. So some people base their mate value on education. And that's not always to say that I'm, I'm, I'm better than you. It's, it is just because people might want to enter a certain career, uh, a certain industry. They want to become a doctor. They want to become a lawyer, a teacher, right? And so education is important. They have to have a uh, education. The job perceives their value based upon their educational background. Then mate value may be perceived as you being uh, very athletic. You have great athleticism. You run marathons. You would usually hook up with someone with that same type of mate value. Is nothing worse than being, with, than being an athletic person and being with a person who is non-athletic. People usually still, even though they may want a connection with the person, they still care about compatibility. So then your mate value, people might perceive their mate value uh, as someone who wants to own property. You know, you may think that being a real estate developer is a very important thing or uh, life goal for you and building homes and, and helping uh, people uh, in um, affordable housing or something like that. That that is something that you care about. So then you base your mate value, who you might marry, who you might date, who you might live long-term with on that. Uh, uh, you have someone who, who, who bases their mate value on being a teacher, that they feel like it is a calling and they don't want to mess up that calling by making the wrong decisions. They, they set a very important a personal goal to stay above reproach. They don't make the types of decisions that are that's going to affect the reputation of being a teacher and that's their mate value. Then you have people who base their mate value on the fact that they want to be a homemaker. They want to be a wife. They want to take care of the kids at the house. 
um, they want to support their husband in his in his efforts and endeavors. So mate value again is based upon your self perception, but it also is linked relatively to what society expects you to uh, to do in terms of mate value. So then you have to consider yourself as do you consider yourself as having high or low mate value? And again, that all depends on uh, what sort of contribution uh, you have, what sort of con uh, contribution you want to make. This is more along the lines of, of entering the dating market and then transitioning into marriage. So I've heard people say oftentimes that there's a woman that they will, uh, will date, but even if that is a good woman, they won't marry because they don't feel a connection. So make value then, um, that person um, that they have a connection with uh, would have a higher mate value. That person doesn't have to have a lot of money. They don't always have to be compatible. But the fact that they have a connection is something that that, that individual cares about. And they will leave a good woman or leave a good man simply because they don't feel a connection. Well, then your mate value is high there. But then there are superficial uh, high value, low value, mate value uh, concepts as well. Some people um, base their mate value on the car they drive, on, on the job they work at, the high seven figure type job. They, they drive a Porsche. They live in a high rise. They go to all the great parties. They may know some celebrities or something like that. So they're basing their mate value on that. And if you don't fit that mold, and it, it, it is a mold, if you don't fit that mold, then you will automatically consider low mate value. People don't understand that rich people see everybody else who is non-rich as poor. Forbes even has uh, the poorest billionaires list. So that if you are not double digit billionaire status and you don't have uh, companies and, and brand names and products or something like that and you just you just have a billion dollars in the bank uh, in the bank you will be considered a poor billionaire so then your value within the context of the billionaire list where you have people like Jeff Bezos I think is worth a hundred plus billion dollars and then on down the line with Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Warren Buffett and so on, those those three those three to four people would be considered the ones who are higher mate value in America compared to anyone else who was of billionaire status. However, if you compare their billionaire status and their uh, holdings and their investments to say like the royal family in England, they wouldn't measure up. The royal family doesn't necessarily have to have a billion dollars in the bank, but they have so much influence on, on multiple continents that that is much more of leverage than say an American billionaire. So then the royal family, not just because they're a royal, but because of their reach they would have a higher mate value. So anyone who marries into that family would have a higher mate value. But then if you look at the context of that royal family, there will be some royal family members who would never uh, get the same kind of respect and honor as senior family royal members. So you add that context right there and you see complexity there. There are a lot of people we don't know in the royal family because all we know is say Prince Harry, Prince, uh, uh, Prince William, Kate, uh, Meghan Markle, the queen, her kids. We only know of those people. And so they are the only ones who have higher uh, made value. But then if you look at the difference between the um, you know, succession line, um, Prince William and Kate, are higher in the succession line than Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. So then you have all these different new um, different dynamics within just one context. So then you ask, you have to ask this question: What are some of the ways in which you can increase your mate value? Well, the typical way that you usually increase your mate value is by marrying up. That's that's usually the type of way. 
uh, until until people learn that they can uh, do things on their own, they can be independent, they can go get their own money, become millionaires, etc. Right? But if you are still looking at mate value as socially perceived, unless you connect yourself with someone who is of higher mate value just by social perception alone and by elite status and then even going up to royal status, you still don't have the same high mate value. You could have, you both could have $5 million. You as an individual who pulls yourself up by your bootstraps and uh, and this royal person who uh, who inherited five million dollars, you both can have the same five million dollars, but you but based upon social perception, the person who is the royal would have would be the person who actually increased their mate value just by inheritance alone. They didn't really have to go out and work anywhere. And then of course, how we perceive the royal family as being significant, uh, that's going to always um, reflect an increase in mate value or just be considered high mate value. So these are the three questions um, that are explored within chapter three of the book, uh, Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships, and it's on mate value. And I didn't necessarily look at the ideal of toxic encounters, but just thinking about how we perceive ourselves and how we are socially perceived and how oftentimes it's possible that we might enter certain types of relationships based upon mate value. So the book is available on Amazon. You can visit my website, reginawhyfavors.com for more tips. And then please like, subscribe, and follow. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Just type in Regina Y. Favors. Thank you very much for listening.